I get a lot of questions about what it takes to get a job in the animation industry, whether it's demo reels, resumes, software, schools, whatever, a lot of questions. And almost always the answers boil down to some form of, it depends based on where you wanna work and what you wanna do. But the barrier that it seems that most people run into is they don't seem to know what's out there. No one really realizes how many options there are. Because I only ever hear the three same options of I wanna be an animator, a modeler, a director, my life's purpose is to work at Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks. That's kind of all that anyone ever says. No one ever brings up all the other many things there are to do because I don't think anybody knows. I don't think schools are talking about all the different jobs that you can have, careers, stepping stones, whatever. There's a lot of options. So today, let's talk about them. I wanna to talk to you about 10 different jobs in feature animation, so movies, that you've possibly never heard of, that you could attainably go and get a job in and have a great time, whether it's temporary, whether you're just trying it out, or whether it's something you will end up doing long-term. And if you end up liking this video, maybe we'll do one on games, maybe we'll do one on TV. There's a lot of different parts to the animation industry. This is just one of them, so let's talk about it. Now, before we jump into the jobs, on the topic of learning new things, I wanna give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a documentary-based streaming service. It is a website where you can check out thousands of documentaries in all kinds of different categories to learn new stuff that you've probably never considered before. They have 35 different collections and categories of different curated programs, things like ancient history, space science and tech, food, adventure and travel, unsolved mysteries and crime, tons of cool stuff. Personally, I really like the physics-based ones because I really like physics and space. So if you're looking for something interesting and educational to watch on whatever device you happen to be watching on, make sure to use the code Sir Wade when you sign up and you'll get the entire year for 15 bucks, which is a pretty sweet deal for the amount of cool content they have on the platform. And honestly, just like a side thing, I kind of wish documentaries were more of a thing when we went to school. Like anyone else who went to school and like we had to watch videos every now and then, why didn't we watch documentaries? I don't know if they didn't exist enough back then or what, but I feel like they're so much better than all the cheesy school videos we used to watch. Yes, that's French they're speaking. And no, these children aren't French, they're American. And they've acquired their amazing new language skills from Muzzy. Anyways, thank you to Curiosity Street for sponsoring this video. And if you do want to check it out, check the link in the description to sign up and make sure to use the code Sir Wade to get the entire year for $15. Now, something interesting that I've noticed is whenever I get to speak at a school or talk to students who are learning animation, but one of the things that I've always kind of noticed that I found kind of odd was how almost every single person in all the classes always just says, I want to be an animator, which is great. I mean, that's what I wanted to be and that's that's what I do. However, I find it weird that just everybody says animator or modeler or sometimes like director or something a little bit more abstract, but very rarely do I hear anything else. There are so many other jobs in the animation pipeline, which I would love to do a video on if you're curious of like, how does the pipeline work? Let me know in the comments. But today I want to focus on a few different parts of the feature animation pipeline that I don't think get a lot of attention or at least I didn't know about them when I was going to school. And by the way, if you have any questions on this, if you wanna talk about it live, I'm live twice a week down on Twitch, link in the description below. And also if you wanna support the channel, a link to my Patreon, all that down below. So let's get into it, 10 jobs. Number one, pre-visualization, pre-vis, post-vis, tech-vis, pitch-vis even. There's a whole bunch of different kind of categories here. Now for a great explanation of how this all works together, I'm just gonna pull up the Third Floor's website. The Third Floor is a company in LA. They handle a lot of this kind of stuff. They are one of a couple different companies that do this that I know of, but I have some friends who work here, so I'm gonna use this as the example. If the script is the verbal explanation of the movie and storyboards are the visual kind of story pieces of the script, and if an animatic is taking the storyboard and putting it to motion, it's kind of an animated storyboard, well, previs is the 3D version of that. Basically, the entire movie gets made in previs with kind of proxy assets, temp voices, the whole thing's tested ahead of time. It allows the director to make a lot of kind of big decisions early by seeing some rough versions, refine stuff down. That way when we get to final production, a lot of that iteration has already happened and you can move forward with confidence. By doing this, you also open the opportunity for tech viz, which is by having a camera move through the previs space, they can actually analyze all that information. What's the focal length of the camera? What lens are you gonna be using? Are you gonna be on a dolly, a jib, some kind of a different crane that you're, you're attaching the camera to. How big is the green screen? How far is it from the camera? All the technical details of the actual physical production get calculated based on the pre-visualization. Visualization. God, that's hard to say. <laughs> that's why they say pre I guess. This is now even being mixed with virtual production, which is kind of like that whole Mandalorian thing that we saw with I mean, that's pretty sweet. And once you start recording, you can actually use post-vis, which is the process of taking the actual live action footage and putting it into the pre-visualization. That way you can make sure everything's working before you go ahead and do the final stuff. So this entire process, it's a, it's a whole nother pipeline that exists at the very beginning of the VFX feature animation production. And something interesting about working in that area is often you're going to be using a more generalist skill set. So I get a lot of questions about, do I need to specialize in animation or do I should I also be doing 
TD work? Should I be doing modeling? Should I also be trying with lighting and rendering? And you know, if you have a skill set that's more broad, you can do all that stuff. You're going to be a huge asset on a team where you're going to be probably wearing a lot of hats, doing a lot of jobs because you're just kind of putting it all together. Versus if you're working at a big studio, you may only be doing one thing. So when you hear that answer of, oh, it depends on where you're working, that's kind of what we're talking about. There's a whole nother area that you can work and you can work on these movies way before anyone else even knows those movies are being slated because they're being planned and you're part of the planning process. Job number two, production assistant, production coordinator. You've probably heard these terms as being a PA on something, but do you really know what that means? I didn't. When I worked at DreamWorks, there were a lot of PAs and a lot of production coordinators. The entire kind of production workflow of a movie is you have all the artists working on the movie, and then you have kind of the, the studio overhead, legal, accounting, recruiting, marketing, like there's a whole bunch of stuff to keep kind of the studio running, depending on the company. And then you have production, which is this interesting blend where it's not like legal and accounting, but they're not necessarily the artists either. They're kind of the artist wranglers. They make sure that the movie actually gets done. But in the same way that you can have like a head of animation or a lead animator or a supervising animator, like you kind of have this hierarchy where you know animators come in and you can grow as in your career. Producer is the top of another kind of food chain here, which has production assistant, production coordinator, and a bunch of other roles depending on the studio. They can be called different things. But essentially the, the role here is to make sure things get done. So if you are organized, if you like to get stuff you know, logistically figured out, scheduling, knowing the different skill sets of the artist, managing schedules, setting meetings and recording times. I don't fully know all the details. Someone who's a producer is probably watching this going, you're forgetting all the important stuff. I don't know, I'm not a producer. But that is a whole nother job section that movies would not get done without the production team. I've seen a lot of people get their foot in the door at a studio by becoming a production assistant, production coordinator, and then moving into the art world if they find that that's where they want to be. And I found a lot of people who thought they were going to do that, but ended up really loving production and they stay in it. And they're just, they're going to be producers and whatever else comes of it. Which is hopefully going to set up a theme for, you know, some of these jobs is if you are a creative person, if you like movies, if you like games, if you like the stuff that you're creating in these studios, but you're not really sure if you've got the chops to be an animator or you don't really know if you love modeling all that much or something, there are a lot of other jobs that you can still participate and collaborate and make cool stuff. So you're gonna see a lot of that here. Next up is CFX or character effects. And then every studio is gonna be a little bit different about kind of who's doing what. So this may not be a blanket statement for everybody, but usually character effects are hair, cloth, animation of anything in the scene that is not a character, but not like simulation based like effects stuff. That's not entirely true to say because Clothes are still simulated, like there's still simulations involved. Sometimes this is a technical animator, sometimes that means something very different. It's not super standardized, but usually I'm talking about hair, cloth, props, animation of the sets, things like that. And I will be doing some videos about this kind of stuff, simulating hair, simulating cloth. It's not something I'm super amazing at, but I definitely do have some experience from my time at DreamWorks that I'd like to share with you. But if you would like to learn a lot more about this, if this sounds like something you really want to get into, I'm going to link below a class from Josh Sobel. Josh, I think that's how I say your last name. Hopefully I didn't butcher it. You probably know him as the creator of some of these rigs that you've probably seen around. And he also was recently a CFX artist at DreamWorks. He released a class recently on a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to make a link to that down below if you want to check it out. I've also bought it. I haven't watched it yet. And I'll be making my videos about this stuff before I watch his because I don't want to copy his and then make videos about it. That's his stuff. I'll be making my own videos. But if you want the real stuff, check out his link in the description. Job number four is the audio engineer or whatever they call it in the industry. I'm actually not sure what they call it, but the person who's in the recording studio recording the voice actors, preparing the dialogue for animation, sound effects, all kinds of stuff like that. Again, not something I have a ton of experience with, but when I was at DreamWorks, we did have this really cool workshop, which was like kind of a voice actor workshop where we had a professional voice actor who does a lot of work with the studio come and a few people could sign up to do a voice acting lesson workshop series for a couple of weeks and I did that. It was actually super fun. But there was a guy in there kind of, you know, in charge of this giant soundboard of controls, making sure levels and different effects and stuff were good. And he'd apply it to the animatics, to the animation to make sure it all worked. It was actually really cool. So if you like audio and music and that kind of world, I mean, there's a whole section for that as well. Job number five, something I am a little bit more comfortable talking about because I know a little bit more about it. Crowds and cycles, the background animation for the movies. Now, again, every studio is a little different. Pixar has fixed animators. DreamWorks doesn't have that. They have uh, animation TAs, technical assistants, I think is the, the word for it. A Kind of a joint job between animation and rigging. A again, every studio is different, but there's almost always some form of cycles or crowds where instead of focusing on kind of the per shot acting and mechanics of, you know, a specific condition of emotional state and what's happening in the movie, there are animators who do the cycles, the crowds, the backgrounds, the stuff that's going to be procedurally applied to the background characters 
characters with the big AI brain of, you know, have certain characters walk and offset the different actions and make sure they're all cheering. And some studios will use motion capture to achieve some of this. Others will not touch motion capture at all, but you have to animate the cycles and then use a more technical approach to apply those cycles to the crowd simulations. And every studio is different. Sometimes crowds and cycles is their own thing separate from animation. Other times it is part of the same kind of hierarchy and it can be used as a stepping stone. And if that's the case, then if you have, for example, only ever done games work and you've done a lot of cycles, but you haven't done a lot of the you know, specific acting stuff, that may be a great way to jump into feature if you want to by using all of your cycles abilities in that role and then eventually switching into character animation. Or not, you could do it the other way and take the feature animation skill set, apply it to cycles, and then learn how to go do games. So there's a lot of interesting crossovers that you can kind of mix and match your skill sets. Next up we have matte painting. If you look at any animated shot, there's the foreground, there's the background, and then there's the really far background. Matte painters take care of everything behind the actual modeled set of your environment because, you know, everything that's on screen has to be modeled, textured, lit, and rendered but there comes a point where there's an end to all of that and everything behind it is handled by matte painting. So a lot of mountains, a lot of clouds, and it kind of just depends. Sometimes that stuff is going to actually be created in 3D because you need dragons flying through clouds and stuff, and other times it's just going to be background elements. Which leads us to the next job, compositing. You've probably heard of this before. Compositors take all the different assets from all the different departments and combine it into the final composition of the film. Because when a studio is rendering its final frames, it's not doing the entire thing all at once. It does it in pieces for the most flexibility for the compositors to then work with. Your characters, your effects, a lot of different things, shadows are going to be separated out so that compositors can dial in the final look. And when it comes to visual effects, live action stuff, it's then integrating the two scenes together. Now, I'm not sure if this is a separate job or kind of within the compositing department. I don't know, we're gonna call it a second job. Image filing, something that I didn't even know existed when I got to DreamWorks, IMF, we called it. IMF was a smaller department from what I understand that would handle rendering artifacts. It'd make sure that the final renders would, were actually correct. Sometimes there were weird artifacts, sometimes there was like fuzziness, or things would kind of render in front or behind of where they should have been. Something went wrong on a few of the frames and it needed to be fixed. Rather than try to go back figure out like where the bug was and re-render all the frames, they would actually use Photoshop or some other applications to manipulate the image and make sure it just looked right. So they'd kind of tweak it a little bit with some movie magic. To be real with you, I have no idea how someone gets into that department or what the skill set is required to do it. I, I don't know, but it's a job that I didn't know existed. So there you go. Technical director or TD. Now again, Every studio is different. Uh, I have to keep saying that because there's going to be someone in the comments who's like, well, at my studio, a TD is a rigger. Well, at my studio, a TD is someone who codes tools and plugins for the show. And at my studio, ours just makes sure everything doesn't break. It totally depends, but this is a job that's completely essential at any studio. TDs can be a bunch of different things. One could be a department TD where they focus on animation, for example, and they build tools for animators to do their work better or different other departments, surfacing, modeling, and so on. They could be a show TD where it's more pipeline focused, making sure everything doesn't break. That way when data transfers from one department to another, it goes through a different stage of production and something's weird, they make sure it's all working. The most important thing here is computer science coding, someone who has a really technical mindset who can make sure things run smoothly, create new things, and so on. Sometimes it even means building an entirely new renderer. DreamWorks, for example, had one renderer when I started working there, and by the time I left, they had built, I think it's called Moonray, which is a path tracing, ray tracing renderer. So if you saw How to Train Your Dragon 3, Bilby, or the new Crude 2 trailer, you should hopefully notice that the lighting in these looks amazing. Not that they didn't look good before, but the technology they now have is far superior to what they had before. And TDs play a big role in that. And last but not least, training. In case you didn't know, or if you haven't seen some of my older videos, I worked in the training department. That's what I did at DreamWorks. I was a trainer. I think a technical training specialist was my job title. And so again, this is one where studios all are very different. Some studios don't have this at all. Some have a couple people, some have a whole department focused on this. But production training is a thing that exists and different studios have different levels of it. For example, we actually had a whole team for all these different kind of subdivisions. When I first got to DreamWorks, there were like 13 or 14 of us, I think. And when NBC bought DreamWorks, things changed, there were layoffs, and our department was one of those affected, I think. We went from 13 or 14 down to, I think there were four of us after that. So the department changed significantly during that, but just to say that every studio is different and every company treats it a little bit differently. I think at Pixar, it's like the Pixar University, I think is what they call it, I don't know. But production training is a job. But that was a job that I had no idea even existed when I was going to school, and I definitely didn't think that, that was what I was gonna end up doing to get my foot in the door in the industry. And so the point of all of this is just to point out that number one, there are a lot of career options. There's a lot of different things you can do. So if you are trying to get that one job at this one studio and it's just not happening yet, 
try working at other studios, try working other jobs, try lots of different things, especially if you're a student and you've only ever focused on just animation or just modeling. Try more things, taste all the different flavors, like have fun trying new things and see what you like because you might end up finding something you like even better than what you thought. Or if not, you might just have a better sense of what's going on in the production pipeline that'll make you a better communicator and collaborator for the other artists around you. But regardless, the best thing you can do for yourself is to have a diverse skill set, a variety of skills, if nothing else, just so that you understand what there is out there and you can make a good informed decision of what you want to do. But let me know in the comments, what kind of animation jobs do you find interesting? And what other sectors of the industry do you want to have another one of these videos? Do you want one on games? Do you want one on TV? Should we talk about YouTube animation? Because that's a whole industry that Again, that exists. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts. And of course, if you want to check out more educational stuff, keep learning because you're in the mood now. You're like, yeah, I like learning. Let's do more learning. A link down below to Curiosity Stream. Thank you again for sponsoring this video. And be sure that if you do sign up, use the code SirWade when you sign up to get the entire year for 15 bucks. Because honestly, that's pretty crazy. $15 even just to try it and just watch a bunch of documentaries. And as always, if you want to hang out live, ask questions, talk about these kinds of things, and get more details on any of these jobs, I'm live twice a week down on Twitch. Or if you want to support the channel, I'll link to my Patreon as well in the description below. But as always, thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.